This is a video to show how we can take high quality, full color 3D scan data using the Artec EVA. The EVA is meant for larger objects, larger than roughly the size of a human head. If I was going to be scanning something smaller, I would use the Artec Space Spider. Both the EVA and the Space Spider work on a technology called structured light. And what that means is that LED bulbs in the front of the scanner are going to project a grid of structured light onto my object and then cameras, digital cameras, are going to read the curvature on those grid lines and use that to infer geometry. One of the cameras is going to pick up the textures on the object, which is a scanning term meaning just the colors, so that later on I can map those colors back onto my scan data and get a full color rendering of the object. Both the EVA and the spider, along with any optical uh, scanning technology like a laser scanner are going to struggle with shiny, reflective, or clear surfaces. For those, it often helps to spray the object with a little bit of developer spray like this uh, spot check, just powder uh, essentially, and in a jam, a quick trip to Walgreens or CVS for some foot powder like this works almost as well. When I go to scan this shipping container, I'm going to start by hitting the start button on my EVA and getting a preview on the monitor along with a histogram showing me the distances between the surfaces that I'm seeing right now and the EVA itself. Now I want the peak of this histogram to be right about in the middle of the 400 millimeter to 1000 millimeter range on which I can pick up geometric data. I've got my case sitting on top of a turntable right now, just a bearing, so that I can make it spin around while I go to scan. So in preview mode, I'll find my distance, and then start scanning. That was a little fast, but pretty good. We've got a good set of data. It looks a little bit rough right now because we're only looking at the raw data. Now, if I expand this out, we'll see what the scanner was actually picking up. As I was scanning, each frame had to be registered to the one next to it. And during the scanning, our tech studio is only running what we call rough registration. That's a fairly low resolution version of the registration algorithm and it's only fast as fast as it needs to be so that the computer can keep up as I'm scanning and I can get that visual feedback on my monitor. I want to get a full 360 degree view of this case so I'm going to flip it over and get the other side. Just get this balanced on my bearing. That should be good. A little slower. And we'll take a second scan. That one looks pretty good as well. I might be missing a few areas that would warrant going back and taking an additional scan from a third angle, but for now, this should be good. As soon as I exit the scan window, our tech studio is going to run fine registration. That's the middle of the three registration processes that it's going to run to more accurately fit all of that scan data together in space. I've got a little bit of data that I don't want from other things in the room, in this case the floor. So I'm going to use my eraser tools to get rid of that data. I've got a number of different selection tools that I can use, but I like to use the base selection, which is going to intelligently look for what it thinks to be the ground plane of my scan data, 
and select it all at once so that I can just erase it very easily. That looks good. Now I need to align these two scans to each other in space. My align tool works fairly simply. It does have an automatic alignment that it can sometimes do, but in this case I'll show you the manual method. All I'm going to do is pick out a few common points between the two scans to help guide this alignment process. I don't have to be perfect here because our tech studio is going to use those points only to get the two scans close to each other and then it's going to use all of the colors and geometry to bring them together. Hit the wrong button there so I'll just grab those again. This is all so easy that it's not that big of a deal. And there is my alignment. You can see as I move around and look at the point cloud data that these two do now line up very closely. Again, I'm missing a few areas. If I wanted to get as much as possible, I can go back and take more scans now or later if I want to. The next step I'll do is global registration. This is the third and highest resolution uh, version of this process where it tries to fit the scans together. Now, surfaces that don't have a lot of geometric distinction can be scanned and registered better if they have uh, markings on them with different colors. Some objects that are either like a big flat wall or a plain cylinder can be scanned better if we add some markings to them, maybe with some masking tape or a sharpie. I can run outlier removal, which can take out some noise in the scan, but this scan data is very clean, and generally speaking, outlier removal is not required for the EVA. My next step is going to be to fuse all of this scan data. I've got about 240 scans altogether. I need to fuse all of that into a single tessellated geometry. I've got three options for that. Fast fusion is our most accurate and fastest algorithm but it can sometimes result in kind of a rough looking scan data. If I want a better looking scan, I can use Smooth Fusion, which is meant for uh, organic things, like if I was going to scan a person's face uh, and I had some areas that didn't match up properly that were a little bit rough because the person happened to be breathing while I was scanning them. It's going to smooth over some of those areas. For a part like this, I like to use fat, uh, Sharp Fusion which is going to do a few corrections. It's going to fill up some small gaps in the scan data. And because I've got a decently large data set for it to work with here, it's going to take a little bit of time. This is not the biggest scan I could do. It's probably going to take between 30 seconds and a minute to process. If I took more scans or if I was scanning something bigger that had more data in it, it could take even longer. It all depends on your system, but this is part of the nature of the game here. Okay, so we've got a really nice fusion here. We are missing some areas that I didn't quite catch as the part was spinning around so fast. I could go back and rescan and then take a third, fourth, and fifth scan, combine it with my original two raw data scans, and make a new fusion. But for now, we'll just keep going to show the rest of the tools. I've got algorithms for mesh simplification that I could run to make the overall file size smaller. I can also run a smoothing algorithm if I want to take out some of the lumpiness on the surfaces, or a small object filter to take out little bits of material, maybe some extra little bit of uh, the floor that I picked up that I didn't want. I can also run hole filling algorithms. Now all that we can do inside of Artec Studio is a fairly simple hole filling process. It's essentially going to take the shortest distance around the entire edge of the opening and fill it up with a new piece of surface. It's essentially wrap, stretching saran wrap over the hole. In flat areas that can look pretty good. In others like this corner, could potentially be a little bit unrealistic. 
It all depends on what we want to do. I can also run local algorithms for smoothing, defeature, things like that if I wanted to try and take out some of the lumpiness that was on the top of this case because of all the paper stickers that were put on from shipping. I have a defeature brush that can also remove some of that very nicely. My last, if I'm just going to be uh, looking for geometry, this is the point where I would export probably an STL file or some other file type. But if I want a good rendering of this part on the screen, I'm going to apply my textures to the scan data. That looks really nice. I've got some small adjustments I can make for the brightness or the saturation level, but for the most part, I've got a really nice piece of 3D scan data in full color. This could be exported to Photoshop or any other kind of rendering software. If you're interested in learning more about scanning with Artex scanners, please reach out to your local TriMec representative. Thank you very much.